My name is Leo Connors, and welcome to The Ring and all other sports. Tonight, I got two special guests. One guy you're probably sick of already, and the other guy hasn't been here in a while. Bare Knuckle Burley and Joey Kilmartin. I'm just you? busting you, Joey. It's me again. Thanks, Leo. Nah, no problem. But Joey's been on, like, this is third time in, like, two months. I think maybe four. <laughs> I could be wrong. But, uh, guys, let's just, we're going to just talk wrestling. And the, the biggest story... Was the end of the story. Cody True. Rhodes, what did you guys think? Man? I thought it was great. Uh, Saturday night was touch and go, I feel like. But uh, I think the whole card Sunday was top notch, in my opinion. Me too. There was some good ones on Saturday too, though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The whole weekend put together was great. I oh, think yeah. that they could have done more with the main event Saturday leading into Sunday. It was kind of yeah. just, I mean, yeah, it got the bloodline rules, but there was no, I didn't feel it built it more. Right. You know what I mean? I kind of just felt like, all right, I thought having the rock turn or the rock turn on Roman or something. Yeah. Something would have been good for Saturday night to kind of get people more excited for Sunday, but it didn't really have that. But it served the purpose to get to where we needed to for Sunday night at the big returns. I think that it really was put together well. Um, A lot of people wanted to see it. So, you know, and I kind of... I was thinking maybe under an old regime, they would have maybe not done it again, continued the Roman right. thing just to kind of... But I don't feel at that point there was any coming back from it. I think they did a great job coming back from Cody losing last year. Yeah. Who knows what the original plan ever was, but they they really took it from the Royal Rumble and, and made it worth seeing. Um, it was really the first time I've been interested in watching it in a really? long time. Yeah, I mean, I didn't... I still didn't watch every week, but... Right. I'd find the YouTube clips, and I watched all of Mania. You know what I mean? It was definitely a good show. Yep. And it was nice that his mom was there. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. I mean? Obviously, his dad can't be there, but he finished the story, yep. which is cool. Because I do remember when Billy Graham, you know, uh, got the squ- was it disqualification or something like that when they when they took the belt back from Dusty when he got the belt. Oh, originally. He held it up. Yeah, it was, I can't remember what the f- finish it, it was. It was a false finish, pretty much. Okay. It was a... Uh, you know what I mean? The, yeah. the referee, one of them came out, now his foot was under the rope type of thing. Right. It was more, it was common back in the old days to get the pop. Right. When the heel was ultimately yeah. going to win, but you still wanted that moment for the baby face. Yeah. Um, you know, you could do a lot more when there was no cameras and oh, of people course. weren't watching week to week. And it's still done on house shows occasionally. I've seen it done right. plenty of times. I saw, God, I can remember being in a show when I was a kid in the Cruiserweight title. They did it with the Cruiserweight title at a house show. Nice. And I was so upset because Jamie Noble had won it. Yeah. But, you know, then they came out and Rey Mysterio's foot was under the rope. And then Ray hits the 619 and everybody changes their mind. Big finish. Right. And makes the pop even bigger. So it's an old school tactic. But Absolutely. they were able to throw it into the story and play off of it, which I liked. Nice. Yeah. That, that first time Jamie Noble's <laughs> ever been mentioned on this show. Probably, so I like Jamie Probably Noble. the last. But yeah, he was great. Be the last. Even his Ring of Honor stuff. What was his? James was Gibson. Champ. Yeah. He yeah, he had some champ. really good stuff. That was the reason they brought him back, I think. Yeah. But he just was there at a time where... He's probably my size. So people my size, cruiserweights weren't taken seriously. Right. You're, th- yeah. you're smaller than Jamie Noble for sure. I'm smaller yeah. than everybody, but he's still my size. <laughs> but Jamie Noble is good. So what about, everybody was talking about maybe Priest cashing it in on Cody. And instead, he cashed it in on McIntyre. Yeah. yeah that, was, that was the right move, I feel like. I yeah, so. of course. Yeah. I don't think... For a second, it would have been considered to have him cash in on Cody. Right. Everybody would have been so mad. That would have... Yep. I, uh, that, I mean, I like the heel in me. Yep. It's like, that's great. You let all the energy out of that arena. You know what I mean? It really yeah. makes for an interesting Raw the next night. Oh, absolutely. And then, because to me, Cody should be chasing. Right. <clears throat> he finished the story. He beat Roman. And then if he just lost it right away, that would have been... Amazing, but the way they did it with Drew, I think that that title, that title is much more suited for Damian Priest to build off of. I think than so. the, the actual WWE Championship. Yeah. I know that they say it's on the same level, but I right. feel that heavyweight title is just a little bit below. Well, don't don't forget it was supposed to be Punk and <clears throat> Seth. Yes. So Drew was never going to win that belt no matter what. So right. the right. fact that they gave it to him for what ninety seconds, right? It's was it, it's all gravy for him, you know. True. Yeah. And what about Gunther? 
That was a great match. That was a great title. But I'm saying, but what about Gunther now being open to be in the main event and going for the world title? Mm -hmm. That's possible. Could he he get, could he turn face? No, I don't think Gunther's, and now people will probably think I'm crazy, but he's not world champion. Oh, yeah, dude, he's good. He he doesn't, you need a good Paul Heyman behind him or a good Mike. I'm pretty sure him versus Cody's on deck. Definitely. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Be yeah. a great match, but definitely. I just think that he can't speak well enough to be world champion. That's just my That's opinion. A, yep, you could put, like you said, though, you could put a mouthpiece with him. Yeah, a woman, or, or like you said, all Heyman. But yeah, I think that uh, not now anyway. Right. On, I don't feel that we're even close. I think that his intercontinental title reign was amazing. Yeah. The way they finished it off was great with Sami Zayn, but. Guys, what do you think about Karrion Cross? How had all that momentum coming from NXT, and he, he's like, honestly, like I really don't care too much about him anymore. Yeah, no. and I would, he was red hot. And now they put him back on NXT. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, something slipped through the cracks there. <laughs> There's some, uh, you know, something got jumbled up there. And yep. I don't think they've been able to get to get it back on track. And Scarlett's red hot. I mean, she's gorgeous. Yep. I don't think it's him as much as it's lack of spots. Yeah. And other people filling him. Right. <clears throat> but yeah, it's not what it could be with him. He's definitely presented better, would be yeah. a lot better in a top player, but I haven't really seen him much, to be honest. Right. Well, uh, they dropped the ball with him immediately. They made him look like a joke. He lost his first two matches. Mm hmm. You know, then they gave him a gladiator look. Yeah. He didn't need a new look. Yeah, I forgot about that. He didn't need one. Yeah, that helmet was something. I've seen yeah, and it's like it's like what people, what guys were saying when McIntyre <clears throat> got the sword. Why he didn't need a sword? He didn't need one. Yeah. Well, that was just to add some flash because that was the right. Pe- that was there was nobody in the building. I yeah, yeah. I, I think that a lot of that was Vince. Too. Yeah. Who? Just, uh, yeah. Are we Who? not allowed to say that? No, we can say Vince <laughs> can we, McMahon all we want. Can we talk about it? Sure. All right. Well, what do you think of it? I think Vince is, uh, no, I can't, no, all right. Vince, you know, Charlie Pride said it best. You don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Okay. okay? Very no. true. And, and. You can't just blame Vince on that. You gotta blame her on that too for going along with everything that Vince wanted her to do. Devil's advocate is that, you know, it's anybody that's ever watched the product knows that Vince has been a little pervy. Oh, I'll, I yeah, guess is the word. Yeah. I don't think you disagree with that. No, right? absolutely no, not. You got that. Yep. So when all of this <clears throat> came out that a millionaire was abusing his powers, that was perverted. You know, like the headlines threw me off, the, the trafficking, and all. I was like, yeah. whoa. But, you know, some of those text messages, there's, there's, that's just a crazy, wild old man. Yeah. I hope I have that testosterone when I hit 80, though. That'd be great. <laughs> He's unbelievable. He really is. That's just, but again, she's just as much to blame, and she got millions of dollars she out of it. She was in a rough position, though. Yeah. I'll say that. That's not a, you know, money money changes your thinking at a certain point. Yep. But it's the funny thing is, if you really look into the details, from what I've read, he only ever got caught when the company got sold because they had to explain the hush money. Right. So he had to stop paying it. Yep. So she was like, "Whoa! If you're not going to hold up your end of the deal, yep. Which I don't blame her at all. You nope. know what I mean? So the the fact that it all became public and. Whew, it was wild, but it was not surprising. Yeah. Right. That's that's accurate. Yeah. Definitely not surprising. Yeah, because over the years, the things that Vince has done with Tori Wilson, Stacey Keebler, and many more. Yep. You know? Yeah. Lacey, too. The, Lacey, uh, the one that just got released about a year oh, ago. Oh, Lacey Evans. Yeah, that was. I think that was the, the last one. Oh, really? I think okay. he means on TV. Did he do anything with her on TV? Oh, you're just saying TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, I think he made out with every diva from Almost, yeah, 1998 man. to Almost. probably 2010 on yeah. television. And let's not forget the uh, Kiss My Ass Club. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was hilarious. I'm really. sure there was. I'm sure there was a line of woman that just wanted to tongue Vince McMahon <laughs> on television. But, you know, oh. that, that was all volunteered. Yeah, a little rim. They had a little basket. So you they would say draw that, but you can't say the other names. word with it. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> We're finding the sensor line here on the ring and all, all right. the sports. Let, let's get back to some wrestling, <laughs> honestly. Guys, like I was saying, the scrum. 
to show that footage on AEW the other night, it didn't benefit them at all. No. It was really uncomfortable. I definitely but, don't want to see the Young Bucks versus FTR anymore. Right? I lost I, complete yeah, yeah. interest, if anything. They shoo- They tried to shoehorn the story in with that. And, and that yeah. was the worst part of yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, buddy of mine, I got a couple of friends that work that watch wrestling. When they see me in the hallway, they always stop me and... That was one of the things they asked me. And they say, hey, did you, did you watch it? Did you, did you catch it? I said, yeah, I actually, uh, it popped up on my phone while I was sitting on the toilet this morning. Yeah. And, and that was the perfect place to watch it. Exactly. exactly. You know what was great, though, was the, uh, I don't know what you would call it in me, but I was really happy to see it. I was, I was, too, happy, I was happy that Punk it. got the better of it, You too. can put a visual of it. Um, I wish we heard what was said. Yeah. No, but to I, actually yeah, yeah. have a vision... And you know what I mean? Now we know what it looked right. like. And it was kind of crazy how uh, everybody, because you can't hear it, like I said, but everybody had to act like they didn't know what was going on while the right. words were being exchanged. It wasn't until Punk tried to choke them that right. people were like, now we'll do something. But you have Samoa Joe just kind of warming up like, but he's eyeing it like that's going to be a problem. It was an entertaining video. Was it good for business? Absolutely not. I think that they were not even necessarily poked. I think... Punk, if you watch the interview, and I watched the whole interview, yeah. he didn't want to talk about it. Um, it was just a good interviewer prying, and he had respect for the interviewer. So he spoke his piece of what happened. Yeah. I don't think his piece of what happened was not what was shown on the video. It was just worded accordingly for right. him to look Well, like. I believe that Jack Perry said, do something about uh, yes. it. Yes. Because he was also disrespectful to Bubba Ray Dudley. And that's a little ridiculous because I'm sorry, you you can hate CM Punk all you want because he is really a jerk and I know for firsthand, okay? But but he's so talented, it didn't stop me from wanting to see him. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Something, but, about, something about Jack Perry that uh, you got to realize too is he grew up rich. He's not. Yes. He didn't. Yes. He, he wasn't a uh, uh, eating spaghettios out of a can type of kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very he's been ri- he's been rich his entire life. Yeah. And you know how you, exactly. You know what money does. Entire- I don't. I respect that Punk, when said do something about it, did something he about it. He pushed him and grabbed um, the front face lock. I loved think, it. <laughs> and I think Punk pointed out too in that interview. He wish he didn't want to be there at that point. He right. was there because no, he right. was under a contract. Um, if you don't like going to work every day and then somebody at work comes up to you and says, do something about it, and you're somebody with Punk's personality, that's a good way out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just have to assault this kid. Yep. Probably not going to face charges because of the industry we're in. Right. Because at the end of the day, if Jack Perry wanted to press charges, he could have easily went the route, oh, it was a wrestling angle. Yep. And, you know, they're, they're taking advantage and trying to make me look bad. Right. And he would have won that in court. Yeah. So he kind of knew I can hit this guy. And it's going to, it's not going to have any long-term effect except me leaving the company that I've requested to leave. And I've been told, no. Yeah. Instead of leaving, we're going to give you a television yeah. show. And, and, and on top of it, though, like, didn't Punk say to, like, Tony, just deal Take care of this. Right. Yes. And if you're not going to like the way I do it if I have to. That, I don't... that punk interview that he gave and he described what happened, you could you could match up his audio from that interview no. to that video. Absolutely. And 100%. It, he, didn't, he didn't say one word a lie. Right. You know what I mean? Right. He described exactly how, how it happened. Yeah. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, man. I like punk, but I've been around him yeah. years ago, and he wasn't very nice. He just wasn't. I've heard for years... I remember meeting somebody from Chicago at a local chaotic show. I'm not going to say their name. but they I know who it is. No, it's not who you think it is, probably. They were a car load that came up. Um, it had, God, Jack, Dent, Jason Danielson or something. Some names that if I got them right, you'd remember were on chaotic okay. shows. And I remember somebody just mentioning, like, oh, that CM Punk kid's out there. This was like 2004. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, there's a reason he's not in our car. And it was yes. just like, so that was like local. And I'm yeah. sure at that point he had pro- like prominence. I think he was in Ring of Honor in 04. I could be well, wrong. Yeah, he was. But 2002, I, too. I remember hearing people say that they weren't fans right. of him from the Chicago Well, area. Punk really started getting a name in 2002 when he went to Ring yeah. of Honor. I mean, he had already had a name in the, mid- the Midwest. Yeah, you know and what this I mean? could be jealousy speaking from these right. people, too. And then he started making it big on the East Coast. Yep. And then a couple of years after that, it was the West Coast. And then back to Florida with TNA. I mean, the guy's talented, and he's a great wrestler. Yep. Um, and like you said, Burley, there's no doubt what he said in that interview and watching that scrum thing 
It all lines up yep. perfectly. Yep, yep. And he lunges at Tony Khan, who's around the corner at the end. I, he really did. He lunged at him. I yep. didn't see he that. He stopped himself. I but think he, he did looked like, over and he aggressively said, I quit. And, and uh, called him a clown. Yeah, You're I mean, a clown. I've never quit anywhere without words. Right. So I'm sure there was right. some stuff besides I quit said, but. Uh, but it was funny. He wrestled right after that, though. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I think that was out of our respect. <laughs> I quit, but I'm gonna go wrestle Joe right. so he don't kill me. Right. My thing is, if that's the case, <laughs> why? And he was doing that real world champion thing. He knows why. Why not put Joe over? Right. That's right. the only question oh, yeah. I really had as to why he wrestled. Because at the end of the day, he didn't know for sure if he was going back to WWE. Right. I genuinely think Punk loves being in the ring. Oh, absolutely. I think it's all the nonsense. He loves I think wrestling. He said, "There's ninety thousand fans out there." I could never do this again. Right. He's like you said. You were going to Ring of Honor shows in 2002. Joe and Punk were there. Yeah. He probably looked at Joe and said, "Let's do it because this yep. will probably be my last match." And then Jerry Lynn was like, "All right, you're on anyway." Yeah, yeah. And you know what I mean? If he's willing to go out there, Tony Khan's too scared to do anything. Right. I've true. said my opinion on Dan Bolio's show about Tony yep. Khan. Oh, it's true though. Um, you're 100 percent right. Yeah. He's their friend. He's not even there, really. He's not their boss. He's, he, he treats everyone yeah. like, hey, buddy. Yeah, he's a good kid playing. <laughs> he's, he's a, a good, good kid. kid. He's go. a really good kid playing with daddy's money. But uh, And and you, you can't. It, <laughs> the match was was just about to go on. It's not like it's a football game where you can throw in the second string. Yeah, back, right, you know right. I mean? it's, you got to do it. You got you to suck it up and you got to do it. Oh, know? Punk could have left. Yeah. Punk could have walked right out that building. Oh, yeah. But he was uh, going to do that to Joe. Yeah, you I know think, what I mean? Because yeah, they are good, good friends. Right. right. And uh, honestly, though, what do you guys think about how MJF obviously got hurt? Mm -hmm. I think, I, I'm a huge Samoa Joe fan, though. I really am. Guy's wicked nice. He knows me. Don't know my name, but he knows me. If he <laughs> sees me at a show, he comes right up and says, food. You know? <laughs> he's a great, no, but he is. He's a great guy, man. And I was very happy he got the AEW World World title. I yep. really, I really, I didn't. I'm glad it didn't go to Moxley. Or even, I know Omega's hurt too. You know what I mean? Yep. But I thought it was a great move to put it on Joe. Yep. I oh, he thought, deserves it. If I'm being honest, he. Yeah. All right, I'll disagree. I Do think you that, disagree? Uh, Samoa Joe as the world champion in 24 is. Uh, well, we already have a Samoa Joe champion on the other channel. Used to. So that's played yeah, out. Yeah, used to. That's um, right. That's the other thing that killed me about AEW. Did you notice they did Dustin Rhodes versus yeah. Samoa yeah. Joe the week yeah. after? Yeah. Come on, guys. Yeah. That's like the time TNA did Eric Young because he had the beard yep. and they won the title right that after That just Brian. goes to show. I mock yeah. booked that. Yeah, it's, it's I mock dumb. booked that match. Am it, I wrong no, the to say that? Is, not even that. The problem is... Stop paying attention to what they're doing over here. Bingo. Pay attention to what you're doing over yep. here. Make yep. what you're doing over here as good as possible. Yep. Do not care about what they're doing exactly. over there. Regardless of if they're poking at you. Yep. You now have the bigger bully on the playground poking fun of you. Right. And you're trying to respond back. And that's like me punching Burley and then him putting his hand out and me throwing 20 punches. Yeah. And get nowhere. That's essentially what right. they're doing. Right. I know you like that analogy. We can try it. It's very Popeye, very Popeye Blue, though. <laughs> <laughs> but that's but essentially true, what they're doing. You're 100% right on that. You They've are. They've only made themselves look stupider. Instead of saying, hey, he's going to talk down on us, let's use that eight minute spot to put on one of the best wrestling. Yeah. Because we have way too many talent that we're paying. How about that are the best wrestlers in the world. No, and I'm surprised they haven't done, I'm surprised they haven't done risque stuff. Because WWE ain't doing it. Yeah, I remember that. I think that would help them a lot if they did some risque stuff with the women. I think if they did just more of the what they were doing in the beginning. Yeah, just be the other guys. Okay, be funner. You know what I mean? Do things they're not doing. Like if they had done that exploding barbed wire match, right? Now the thing about that match is everybody gets mad that the explosion sucked at the yeah. end. If you look at the match though. That's one of the best barbed wire matches to come to the country in the past 10 years. Okay. And I've seen a lot of barbed yep, wire yep. matches. Right. That was put on well. If they had just made it a barbed wire match, that thing would have been over the top great, one of the best main events they had. That was fun. WWE's right. not going to do a barbed wire match. Yeah. WWE's not going to mention Ring of Honor. WWE's not going to... No. You know what I mean? WWE's not going to mention that 
John Moxley just won the IWGP championship. Nope. They're going to do those different things that wrestling fans like. Do that. Right. But don't, so the punk thing didn't work out. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You only made him right in the end. Right. You only made yourselves the immature ones. And the, the nail in the coffin for me was my friend goes, hey, they're in Worcester tonight. You want to take a ride? Sure, let's do it. So we get to Worcester, sit down. I love seeing live wrestling. The first thing they do is send Adam Copeland, Edge. You can't even call him Edge. Whatever. So they refer to him as Adam Copeland, which I had never really caught on. I was like, yeah. oh, all right, you can't call him Edge. So that was annoying at first. And I'm like, I don't want to see Adam Copeland no, I in don't 2024. I'm nope. sorry. But he was opening the He's show. He's looking old. And he comes out. And it's literally 12 minutes of, like, this company's great, and we're doing this. And I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, they're doing this. They're going to do this. Like, they're, yep. they're literally, this is the first minute of TV time they had since the Punk interview. And they're going to they're gonna send Edge out to be like, look how great this company is. And the guy genuinely didn't look like he wanted to be there. Right. He just, he looked like, you know... Come on, guys. We have Osprey, and it was twelve minutes of, and then they gave us two great matches. Yeah. But I was literally sitting there for the first ten minutes of the show, going, "We're doing this," and we got Daniel Bryan versus Lance Archer, which was a great match. Yeah. Will Osprey versus Powerhouse Hobbs, great match. Right. I was entertained for forty-eight minutes of their two-hour show. Wow. It's crazy. <clears throat> yeah. Can I be honest with you? I still haven't watched one episode of AEW. You yep. haven't sent one, not one, one episode? Not one episode of AEW. You know something? You ain't missing much. That's the truth. No. I don't want... Listen, I, I read the results and watch what I want, and I don't watch a lot. I keep I keep up with it. I know what happens. Yep. yep. But I've never sat down and watched an episode of AEW, and I, like you said, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. No, I don't yeah. think you are either. Let's go back a couple of months, okay? You had brought up how, like, you know, uh, AEW does their TV, and... WWE's not going to mention Ring of Honor and all that. Well, they did bring somebody in for the Royal Rumble from TNA, Jordan yeah. Grace, in mm -hmm. the Women's Rumble. And I thought that was genius. Yep. I really, really do. Yeah, she's great. You know, yeah. She really is. I thought that whole crossover was done perfectly. Um, I, she was in the right amount of time. Yeah. To, you know what I, I mean? Like I felt like enough people knew who she was. Yeah. That the ones that didn't know who she was were kind of like, oh, all right, that guy's clapping. Yeah. They and they were probably her. impressed by the she time had she was throwing showing. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she had a good, really good showing. Yeah, she did. Um, was she the only TNA? I think there was another TNA president. Well, no, because Naomi had been in town. Okay, TNA, that's but what she the had already come was. Back. Yeah, that was her return, but yeah. she was leaving. Remember, they did the but big hug, brought, and then they started They brought fighting. the rivalry over. Right. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very mature of Triple H to kind of yeah. keep the door open. I was very excited because I saw a lot of her when I went to Beyond, when I would go to the Beyond shows. She yeah. was on a lot. I got a lot of pictures with her and stuff. Yeah. She is a she phenomenal talent. She yeah. was on an APW show with us years ago. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I didn't when, know that. Yeah, when Joe was bringing in all the, the different girls from all oh, over the place. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Um, was she chubby then? Because I remember, I, I, first time I saw she has a lit, she was a very little bit chubby. I think it was just before she started seeing Jonathan Gresham. And yeah, uh, you know, obviously I can't comment on people being chubby, but uh, she didn't look like she did now. I'll say right. I'll say that. You yeah, know she I mean? looks like a million bucks now. Yeah, a million bucks looks like he could kick my ass then. Oh, this, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I think she'd kick she kicked mine too. Yeah, she you know? she looks great. I think I'd let her. It's, yeah, it's, I'd let her it's kick definitely a. You know? Her and Jonathan but, Gresham are definitely going to the right gym. Yeah. Dude, he's phenomenal, too. If, you know, you give that guy six inches more, and I'm telling you, man, he might be the best wrestler in the world. The joke's But he's right. like five foot six. Yep. So uh, what do you think of the TNA situation, though? I think they messed up by getting rid of Scott DeMore when he must have did something that pissed somebody off big time. Because... I they were starting to do, they were doing better. I don't think that that is, I think looking into it um, from a business aspect, I think Scott Demore just wrong place, wrong time. I think they just felt like they could do what he was doing without him. They didn't uh, realize the, uh, I thought once, too bad. once they saw what he meant to fans and wrestlers, yeah. I thought they would bring him back for sure. But apparently the company, and that's how big business is. Right. It's a big company, they're a little entity, and um, 
they just think they can do it without him, and that's now, a shame. Now there was a rumor that he wanted to buy TNA. Was now did the owners feel that he was going to try to get out? You know what I mean? Like yeah. get in there behind their back or something. I don't know. Yes. No, I think if the money something happened though, mm -hmm. if the money was right. I think they would have sold it. Yeah. I think maybe the right. money just wasn't right and what they felt it was worth and what he, he knew it was worth. Now, who owns TNA still? The cop? Panda? <clears throat> no. Who? I don't. I have no idea who it's owns Anthem, it. Anthem, I believe. Is it? It's a company called Anthem. Last really? I Is heard. It? The insurance company Anthem? Hmm. No. That's my company, insurance. I know a company Anthem. Well, then you're owner. a part owner. Yeah, I'm part <laughs> owner. Congratulations. That, I'd switch insurance thank companies. You. <laughs> I'm going to book Jordan Grace here for next week. There you go. There you go. But yeah, there's something, something went down. It would, right. Yeah, but the good thing about wrestling is, you know, he could be back next week. I would love to see you know him get I mean? back. The guy obviously loves wrestling. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Come on. Yeah. And he the loves, guy's been in it for 30 something years. And he loves the company. He loves the whole yes. thing. Yes. You know, that's, that's, that's the good thing about wrestling is you, you can always come back. Look at right. Punk. Look at Punk. Yeah. 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 And, and, and everybody seemed to say good things mm. about Scott DeMore, too, though. And you didn't hear yep. people not liking him. Everybody would talk about him, would say positive stuff. Mm -hmm. Just I'm surprised. Bizarre. But like you said, anybody can come back. I so, mean, look at Punk. That's, yeah. a, that's the first. I mean, really, that's the biggest one you could say. Because him and Triple H didn't like each other. Right. No, but it shows that they've grown up. Yes, and, uh, and he knows he's talented. At the end of the day, business is business, and you can get along with your ex. Yep, of course. You know what I mean? Especially if you're going to make money together. Right. Especially if you're uh, mature enough to put the past in the past and yep. leave it in the past and learn from it. And they seem to have handled it like that. I think, I think so. I think Punk's grown up that yep. or he's learned how to at least put on the image of more maturity. Right, right. Which is... I don't think you'll see him bitch too much in that WWE from here forward because he knows it's not going to look make him look good at all. Yeah. It's going to make him look horrible. He looks good if he, walking out of this on top. Exactly. If he just keeps a good attitude and, like, and does exactly what he says, have fun, help the young guys, yeah. all that stuff. Well, the young girls, yeah. Every picture I saw of him in NXT was with one of the girls. Yeah. He yeah. has a connection, noticed, I guess, with that. that Cora Jade girl. Have you ever seen Well, you know, you know what CM stands I for, right? I didn't, Chick Mac. I, didn't see, I didn't see him with any of the guys down there. That's, no. all, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I didn't see any pictures of him and Carmelo Hayes or Trick Williams. I saw one. He was you did? He was training with Carmelo Hayes one night. I, saw, I think it might have been on Carmelo's Instagram. So I think he, I think he's kind of looking at the long game here. And I, I, yeah. I do think he probably would like to get involved with the NXT and the training and yeah. stuff like that. Well, so, wrestling yeah. seems to be doing well for him. He Definitely. can't seem to get through a match without yeah. tearing a tricep. Yeah. Now, I gave him the benefit of the doubt when I thought it was the same tricep, but it's it's two it's different the other, triceps. It's the other one, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Maybe it's time to not... Well, he's kind of injury prone. That's I mean, what I'm he's saying. had three matches and he got hurt in all three matches. He's, all three of them. He's getting up there. You know? Yep. Hey. Well, like I said, he's... But... It, He's entertaining, right? No matter yeah, what. Of course, you don't have to like somebody to be entertained by exactly. him. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Because like I said, I was around him and he really was jerk. And guys that wrestled, they hated him too. That's what I'm saying. He was I've so hated. Stories. You know? Yeah. Him and Teddy Hot went at it. And when they were both in TNA. Did you guys watch that document, the, the the show there, the documentary yeah. on Teddy Hot? Uh, no, I haven't seen it. Oh yeah. man, it's gold. You gotta yeah. watch it. You gotta watch it. Cats, Mr. Uh, Mr. Money. Watch it. Yep. Have either of you been around the cats or Teddy? I've been around Teddy. Okay, so I did two shows with Teddy, and he was working a lot with Jay at the time. Yeah. Who me and Jay are super close, so naturally I was hanging out most of these shows with Teddy Hart, to which there was an altercation, and Teddy wanted to go get involved. I'll never forget when he said. Take my cat. I'm going over there. Now, my opinion is... You help us the money? Yes. That cat was drugged. Those cats are drugged up. That man juggled his two cats. <laughs> I swear to God. I he believe it. He does it in the show, too. Yeah, like watching the documentary, I literally watched it with my ex-girlfriend and went, Oh, no, I've seen this. And she goes, where? It premiered yesterday. I go, no, in real life. <laughs> no, I've seen in like, real life. Everything they're saying about this man is true. Yep. Like, I like him. He's That's a nice funny. guy. He I is also a nice guy. have seen him take a thing of lobster rolls out of a catering at a wrestling show and ask me where my car was so he could keep them in the trunk. 
<laughs> and then put a platter of lobster rolls in the back of my car. Wow. So I'm like, that is the most Teddy Hart thing I've ever seen. So this, you know what? I don't think he killed a girl. Right. I think Teddy has genuinely good intentions. Yeah. Of everything he does. Yeah, I don't think he killed that girl. I don't oh, know what happened not. to him, but I don't think Teddy killed her. Teddy is a, I mean, I would have made a documentary looking at him for an hour right. going, yeah, you can get people to watch this. Right. He is entertaining. He's a clown. There's a reason he never made it. But genuinely, from my experiences, he was a nice guy. Yeah. I liked him. Yeah. And I'm probably not, probably shouldn't. <laughs> Listen, but. I met him. I met him through Trent S. Yeah, you know, when, but I would but do the catering things. job. Trent would come and would go to my car, but Trent would always say, "You want me to bring somebody?" He brought Jack Evans one time. This time he brought Teddy Hart. We get in the car, you know, he's back, and then as soon as I like, Teddy's got one too. He's, I'm like, dude. So we got two going around between three of us. <laughs> he lit up in the locker room. Oh, I believe that. And then when I said, "Hey," okay, I believe that. I said, "Are you allowed to he do?" He rolled that? In, in the locker uh -huh. room. He said, "They're happy to have me." <laughs> And I said, they're probably happy to have you. Right. You're right. And he, uh, nobody He's said weird. anything to him. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah, he is very, very nice guy. guy. Very talkative, guy. too. But you oh, got, you got to watch, you, when you get a chance, you got to watch it. Oh, I definitely have oh, got to yeah. watch it, for sure. Most likely tomorrow when I get home. <laughs> it's, Where do I watch it? On YouTube? It's on Peacock. Or? It's a Peacock. It's, it's a Peacock. peacock. Yeah. What's it called? God, like cats, just, convicts, just type and headlocks. In, just type in Teddy Hart. Yeah, it'll it'll yeah. come up, yeah. It has a clever name, though. Yeah? It has a clever name. Now, the thing is, too, you referred to Mr. Money, but I think he has multiple Mr. Monies. Huh? Yeah, I think he, because he, he breeds the cats yeah. and yeah, sells Yeah, right, them. right. He tried to sell me a cat. I was yeah. like, I don't want this I think thing. he tries to sell everybody It's not a even cat. a wig, yeah. man. Like, yeah. he was juggling it. <laughs> but you know, he uh, so he because he had one cat he kept and the two other cats. Right. He was trying to pawn off and sell to other workers. And man, I think somebody did buy a cat. Which he is might be in prison ridiculous. right now. Ridiculous. I think I he think is. He had, there was a warrant for his arrest in <clears throat> Texas. That or he's seeking bookings near you. There is no in between. <laughs> it's one of the other. There is no in between. Oh my god, <laughs> that is hilarious. That really is. All right, so uh. Guys, we talked about the, the signings by the AEW. What about Tama Tonga debuting on SmackDown Friday night and the rumors of the Samoan werewolf, Jacob Fatu, is signed too? Yep. Um, I mean, it's, with that Bloodline storyline going as well as it did, you got to keep expanding on it and yep. milk it for as much as it's worth. You know yeah. what I mean? So I've heard some people theorizing that it's going to be, a, you know, kind of a split faction. Okay. Roman and the Usos back together yep. against the, the new bloodline or whatever they want to call oh, it. Oh, wow. The bloodline wolf That'd pack or whatever. Yeah, oh, yeah. We're doing that? <laughs> yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. I'm getting a red T-shirt. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I got a bloodline shirt. It's red. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. See, they're yeah. already. Yep. Yeah. They're already. Roman's going wolf pack. They've already got it. So I mean, that's that would make the most sense. They're not just with the storyline being so successful. They're not just going to drop it. Right. Just because. Right. Just because right. Cody. Just because they needed to have Cody win the belt because there's no one left for Roman to beat. Right. There was no I, one left for him was, to beat. No, you're right. Hundred percent. There was no one. Yeah. You're right. And he held the title long enough. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh you wait. Know? Yeah. He well, really did. Yeah. He surpassed records. Yep. As did I think that they kind of did that with the Gunther thing too to kind of yeah usher in the new era. Right. Where we can say well, the they they rating. dropped some people completely. Like they didn't say nothing about Pedro Morales was almost three years of being a champion. Yeah, that's true. You know, they said Bruno and Hogan, right? That's pretty much it. Or they say Cena. True. No, I think the the last two that they kept saying was Hogan and and Bruno San Martino. Yeah. They really don't want to let go of the Hogan legacy. And it's funny because my boss is a huge Hulk Hogan. You can't fan. blame him though. He, no, he was grew, the start of he wrestling grew up on skyrocketing. It. He actually AIDS. went down to his beach bar like two weeks yeah. ago, got a picture with him, talked to him. He loves Hulk Hogan. But I've said it to him, I'm like, you know, like my generation, we're not a big fan. Right. And he's like, how could you not like Hulk Hogan? I'm like, yeah, some things have come out, man. But well, he they lies. still, they still, oh, he like that's not, it's. No, he, he was going to be in Metallica. You guys uh, know that, Yeah, right? no, he was. He was, <laughs> yeah, he tried out. he was going to be in yeah. Metallica. And, and the George Foreman grill was supposed to be the Hulk Hogan my, because he missed the phone call. My favorite he said. was, and I got to learn this one because you can definitely make more money this way. Yeah. Was 
by traveling to Japan and back as often as he did, he wrestled more than 365 days yeah. in a year, yeah. which is just incredible. <laughs> like more people need to think like that. You'll make more money. Like people need to learn from him instead of stop thinking he's lying. Dude, that is hilarious. But there's so many lies, though. Yeah. It's a bit ridiculous. My you favorite know, he, was he, he. He's the one that founded and I noticed Kevin Steen. Everything. If you That's did, what he so said. Kevin Owens. Yeah, Kevin Owens. Yeah, Kevin Steen. Well, yeah, he he discovered Kevin Owens. Yep. If you give him the chance, he he did everything. Yeah. You yeah. I mean? No. I just, but that that. George Foreman grill thing is hilarious. I missed the phone call. Oh. Yep. <laughs> and, and Andre the Giant's weight gets more and more every time he tells the story. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It was 800 pounds. I love the story, and I'm probably ruining this for something. And go, no, that was real. That's how it was back then. But he, he tells the story of not going, thinking, or Andre not telling him he was going to go up for the slam until he got out to the Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. You you knew what we were going out to that ring right. to do, but you also you also need to know that Hulk Hogan wasn't the first one to slam Andre the Giant. There was like a dozen yeah. people that slammed him, and the most impressive one was Harley Race. Mm -hmm. Harley Race, like legitimately, unbelievable. Harley was a strong guy and <laughs> probably the top one of the toughest guys, toughest American wrestler. I bet mm -hmm. Harley was. Well, do you know that one time that. The NWA thought they were going to play some monkey business with Ric Flair. So they sent Holly with them. I saw. And they didn't have to worry about it one bit with Holly Race there. Right. I saw firsthand a great Harley Race story. Oh, please. We were down in New Jersey somewhere. I want to say I was with Makua maybe. God, this had to be 12 years ago. And they had brought him in to do a signing. Yep. But it was at like a VFW hall. And um, he smoked a stogie in the back. He just kind of... And one of the promoters or somebody who was working for the company went up and said, uh, Harley, I don't think you're allowed to smoke that in here. And Harley took a puff of his cigar and said, it's a VFW, isn't it? And the guy said, it is. And he said, you're allowed to smoke in VFWs. Nice. And the guy looked perplexed and walked away. And then he sat and smoked that cigar for another 20, 25 minutes and Harley talked don't care. to don't nobody. Care. <laughs> yeah, he don't care. <laughs> One of the, honestly, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, honestly. Yeah. I mean, sure. he took on everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you know this about Holly, but he was in a bad car accident and they tried to take his leg. And I want to say it was Vern Gagne that went there and said, no, come see my doctor. Mm -hmm. Yep. And obviously, Holly saved his leg right. and became one of the greatest champions in wrestling history. Yep. I mean, the Missouri championship was a huge belt that, People would win before they won the NWA belt. And Holly won that belt. Well, he's from that area. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Kansas City, right? So he won that Missouri title like a dozen times. Kind of like Lala with the, you know, the Memphis title. Yep. Yeah, you know? He, he, I think nowadays, with, as more time passes, he, he gets forgotten about, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And uh, the people he trained. Yep. You know what I mean? Tommaso went down there to train yeah. with, yes. with him for quite a while, too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Kenny Omega went down there, and Holly was not impressed. And, well, that's. Uh, <laughs> he was he, he not impressed. He might have known something that uh, yeah. some people still don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, that might have been the problem. <laughs> yeah. Trevor Murdoch, one of my favorites. Ah, oh, he's good. Yeah, he's. And he, anytime you get the chance, he talks about highly. Yeah, he Trevor does. Murdoch is one of your favorite wrestlers. Uh, I not, think I knew that. not, not favorite favorite, right. but, but he was I, good. I, I like the way he works. Is what I'm, yeah. is what I'm trying I to say. I, I like guys that stuff, don't but. look. They look. Trevor Murdoch looks like an old school wrestler. Yep. Seriously. Yep. You know, it wasn't where everybody was jacked yep. back in 1974, 75, 1977. You had guys like. Crusher Jerry Blackwell, Haystacks Calhoun, Andre, mm -hmm. Ernie Ladd. Those I mean, were the attractions, too. You had different size guys. You even had small guys. Rick McGraw. Right. You know, SD, SD Jones wasn't a very big guy. Oh, really? Especially he was like, I mean, don't get me wrong, he was probably six feet, but, he, but I'm talking back, back then, then he wasn't everybody. Giant. You had fat guys. Yep. Yeah, it's, it, it's you know, it's. But it, it's an easy way for these kids to get ahead. You know what I mean? They spend, yeah. after you finish your wrestling class or before you go to wrestling class, you go spend a couple hours in the gym. Yep. The promoter starts using you better, starts, yeah. no, starts noticing you. It's, that's just the era that we're in now. Right. I mean, and, and I don't have, and have been that, for a long yeah. time. Right.
great. Yeah. I mean, it's great. I just, like I said, a guy like Trevor Murdoch just makes me look at, at the olden days. Yeah. You, know you got to I mean? adapt to your look too sometimes. You yeah. did a great job of that. You and Bugsy both. Yeah, we flew on. We tried. You had a great right. gimmick. Um, yeah, it's it's about adapting to your environment. I've heard a great quote in wrestling is the crowd doesn't know what you can't do or what you are. Right. So you play to your strengths. Yeah. And I think that's definitely something people should do definitely. more. But. Definitely. Um, but all right, so we uh, we already said, right, what's next for Gunther? What is next for Gunther? I, you think it's going to be Cody? I think it's going to be him and Cody. Now, I think that would be great matches. Yep. Do I they, do. Do they have an opponent for him at uh, Backlash yet? I don't think so. I think they had a... What's the name? They probably having a big, match on Raw tonight, I would assume. Who, Gunther? Or no. They had a match last week on Raw for, I think, Seth Rollins. Oh, okay. I think SmackDown had a match to determine Cody's... Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, I, I could be wrong. Oh, I haven't watched this yeah. week. Santos was Escobar was in it. Rey yeah. Mysterio was in it. Did they have a winner? There, there was supposed to be. I think it was a five-way or even a six-way. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. I, I don't know who won. I didn't watch back then. Yeah. I did. I, I, you know what I did watch? I read that Tama Tonga came in. So it's, and I had smacked I on tape. That. I went to YouTube. I wanted to see it right now. I mm-hmm. didn't want to wait. I'm going to find out who won. You know? For you. Um, but, yeah. And, and Seth Rollins is hurt, right? He, he, he was hurt before the before right. the even started, and it and it looked to me like when Cody was celebrating, he's like he's really hurt bad. Something about yeah, his leg again, right? Yeah, it was the one that he didn't he have tears. He well, he he messed it up originally in that match with Kane. You remember that a few yeah, years back? Yeah, 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 I do. And he was out for a while, right? And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it's the same leg. Wow. So it's just you know, and he's. He's not a spring chicken anymore either. You no, know? he's not. But I like Seth Rollins. Oh, you yeah. like Seth? Oh, he's a workhorse. He, he is, is a workhorse, yeah. man. He really, really is. Yeah. To me, he's better than any, except for maybe Osprey. Honestly, I think Seth's better than anybody else on their TV. Even better than Daniel Bryan, who I love. I love Di- Bryan, Bryan Danielson. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? But Seth Rollins is a Damn good wrestler. Man. No, he, it, Damn good. That don't forget that belt that that Damian Priest won. It didn't even exist. Seth Rollins right. is what put it on the map. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely right. Because it was the unified title. Yeah. It's going to be. Right. Uh, it's going to be L.A. Knight versus Sty- AJ Styles on SmackDown this week. Okay. The to see who take what will face Cody Rhodes. Hmm. That'll be pretty good. I think obviously AJ Either would give him great matches. matches, and I think L.A. Knight's pretty good too. Their I match. Too. At, their match at Mania was probably. The, towards the top of the best matches. Yeah, I, what, what do you guys think? Did, you, did Rhea and Becky steal the show? You know, or did Sammy and Gunther? I mean, there were some really good matches that people didn't expect to be as good. Rhea and Becky is the only match that I didn't watch. The the I was I was down in Florida visiting my parents. Okay, so I watched some of it on my phone. We watched some of it on the TV, and I just that was the only match I didn't see any of it all. So I can't speak on that one. Oh wow, no kid, it was a great match. You saw it, right? Yeah, I didn't. Wow, it was good. It was okay. It wasn't I thought it was a great match. match. I really did. I, I love Rhea Ripley. Um, I like the man, but I think that's the dumbest friggin' name. What did the WWE for years pushing the women, pushing the women, pushing the women, and then it gets to the top and she's the man? I think it's kind of a pun. I, I thought it was a stupid pun, though. I did. <laughs> You're fighting for women's rights and yeah. I don't know. Yeah. If it sells T-shirts, that's all that matters, right? My favorite thing. Is right. No, I hear it, but I thought, I just that's just me. I was like, I think it's stupid. Did you ever see Lacey Evans finish? No. She would, Pro- I might have. She would punch him in the face, and it was called The Woman's Right. That nice. is a good name. Yeah. For finish. I liked her. I thought she was pretty good. Good-looking girl, too. If you want to see her finisher now, you got to pay $9.99 yeah, a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only fans. <laughs> yeah. You can see Mandy <laughs> Rose, too. God, listen, we're saying we're talking about a couple women. Can I bring up my favorite woman's wrestler? Sure. Sure. Caitlin. And she's not because she's the greatest woman's wrestler, but man, I love that girl. Yeah, she had a good she had a good run when she was there. Yeah, she did. I'm she surprised she never did. came back. I know. She yeah. says she wants to come back, but yeah. I've seen it on Facebook. Yep. Yep. Well, AEW doesn't have enough women, so they should probably... No, they should definitely load up on those. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. That more, for sure. I wrote down the AEW women's roster. There's 38 women. Were you on vacation this week? On a company that has four hours 
of television a week. Did you do this at work? Because they're probably going to dock your pay if you took that much time. No, no, no. I uh, no. Like, Listen, I work eight hours. I get paid the whole day. I don't, <laughs> I don't take a big break. I mean, I get paid for my breaks. No, but honestly, it's unbelievable how many women they have. I mean, some of the ones that are on TV a lot, Anna Jay, Tony Storm, um, Mariah May's been, they've been showing her quite a bit. Um, Nyla Rose, Thunder Rosa. Faster, list them all. Go, no, go, but, go. No. I'm just kidding. But we only have Dr. Alarmies. Britt Baker, they have some talented women. Yeah. It's, they don't know what to do with them. It's not a bad roster. It's not. It's just, it's too many. It, the men's roster's the same. Oh, you yeah. have a ton of wrestlers, um, and credit to them, they are not. You know, they're, they're firing some people. Sadly, they fired George Joel. I don't know if you saw who? that. Are you familiar? Oh, George, George Joel. Joel. who, did yeah. you know he just opened, he bought Seven yeah. Star Pizza? Yeah. Oh, he bought, no, He bought stop. Seven Star Pizza in Nashua. Really? Uh, oh, so, so now he's so got that second, one. Second location. Yep, he's got a place in Nashua now. It's called Zoe's Place. So shout out to anybody in Nashua watching. Zo roast beef? Uh, he's doing roast beef there, but it's still got the sports bar, wow. uh, pizza, full menu. No but kidding. that's George's place. Wow, good for him. Yep. Definitely. You should have him on sometime. I'm sure he's... Oh, he's I would love to have him on. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's nice. I, we had never met. Um, I actually went in there. My buddy hangs out at Seven Star a lot. I went in yeah. to see my friend, my roommate actually, and I walked in and they were changing the whole place over. And I kind of recognized him a little. And he came up and just said, hi, I'm Jora. And I said, I know who you are, Jora. Nice. He's, yeah, he's, he's a cool guy. Yeah. Super nice. He's the one that threw me out in my, uh, my last match, the... The, the, battle, the Battle Royal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were there doing... Yeah, I was yeah. there, yeah. And uh, super nice. Yeah. The only, the only thing I will say was kind of funny. He wanted to do uh, a line a line out over the top, <laughs> yeah. which I used to, I could... We used to, we used to practice that in, in, in class. Well, yeah, but I used to be able to do it like a... You know, like nothing, yeah, yeah. right? It don't, didn't matter how heavy or light I was. And uh, I was like... I don't. I don't have. I don't have 100 percent confidence in me still being able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't we just do the whole? Uh, it's not uh, safe the, going the forward. Can, yeah. It's, it, uh, well, even Kurt Angle said before he can't. He could never go back. And if you look, he turns and goes. He gets hit from the back and rolls out to the top. I've been told that by other people too. For it, some people, yeah. that whole just dumping your body right. backwards is uh, unnatural. And the whole learning to wrestle is unnatural. But that's definitely one where yeah. you're really. Trusting right. everything to go right or everything is going to go wrong. So mm -hmm. I don't blame you for that. Yeah. But, and uh, sp just real quick. Yeah. Uh, popped up in my Facebook memories. Tomorrow was the 2018. So what? Six, six years ago. Six years ago was the last time that Knuckle Busters were on. Oh, wow. Together. Tomorrow? Yep. Did you retire? Did you have like a. That's why. Did somebody turn heel at the end? Of what? The oh, knuckle, the knuckle bosses? Bosses? Yeah, did you no. throw them through a glass window? No. And I know I've said this to you before, but that was the last time that all three of us were together. Wow, that's wild. So I think, okay. Yeah. I thank you for that. Nah, no problem, man. I mean... That was on the show, you mean? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant the last booking you took. No, no, no. The last okay. thing I did was the, was the Big uh, the big Woody the, Battle Royal. Yep, last year. And then they changed the name of it. They cl Clip a City Rumble yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, yep. So if it was still the Big Woody, I'd be there every single year. Right, right. But right. now it's the Clip a City Rumble and... Yeah. They can clip me right out of that big one. Big Woody was a big fan of the show because he was <clears throat> mad at me for the stuff I was saying about Todd Sopel, and he still came up and brought Louis Ortiz, you know, and stood up there, gave me and Louis the last 10 minutes and said, if you don't like Todd Sopel, you can kiss my fat. <laughs> and he walked right off, and it was I was fine with that. Yeah. He did like Todd Sopel. Because he, he did. He liked him a lot. Eh? He did. That was nice of him. Yes, Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I know you had your problems, right? Yeah, yeah. I just didn't like what he did here. Okay. Say we'll that, that someone after. killed somebody, and and it was really the only reason why he had a problem with that person is because that person gets booked all over the place, and he can't get booked. All I know exactly. Over the place. We'll, we'll talk about it after, though. You know, probably he, better that way. His band's getting booked all over the place. Yeah. So. He's, Dude, he's, can I say something? He's one talented guitarist. Is he? He's unbelievable. Yep. Dude. He's incredible. Here's the thing. He's Me incredible. And Todd Sopel, we never had beef. He, I think he had beef with a lot of people I surrounded with. Um, I was never a huge fan. Um, but I will say that guy was one of the few people at the time that he had six sets of gear with his name. He looked right. good. He put in the work in his yep. body. Um, Great talker. 
if he, great talk. If he had learned to talk appropriately backstage, yeah, and you know, represent himself not as egotistical right. without ever really receiving the proper training, I think he got lucky in finding Big Woody and that crew. It gave him a good platform yeah. in wrestling. But if you notice, he's been out since Big Woody's out, and uh, he's not coming back. To I wrestling. think that's a shame because he definitely had talent and potential. Yeah, God, absolutely. Did he just absolutely hundred percent. You know what? And it he's happens. not my favorite person, happy, but I'm not gonna lie. What make myself look like an idiot? That kid is an incredible guitarist. In good. He's got a lot of talent, and I'm glad personally that he's happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Me too. You know what I mean? That's all that matters. Me too. If you I don't, don't hate any, the guy. If you don't want anything to do with wrestling, I more than understand. It's been right. Plenty toxic throughout the years yeah. for plenty well, of people. Well, when I when when Woody passed away, seeing that I didn't have great, I hit him up and told him I was sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sorry to hear about a lot Big of people Woody, liked Woody. You know what I mean? And I meant it. He even said to me, "Man, that thank you very much. Yeah. You know, I say, appreciate well, that." Well, Woody had a, a soft spot for him. Not, they were good friends. I'm not yeah. going to say he had a soft spot for him. But Todd Sopel was the APW champion before everybody wanted to go and work at APW. Right. You know, later on, you had. Demon, you had Malonis, yep. you had John Poe, yep. you had everybody. There was a time period there where all the big guys were coming through AWW. Right. It would, might, might, might have been just for one match, yep. but they wanted to work there. Yep. And Todd Sopo was champion and, for lack of a better term, carried the company when nobody wanted to work there. Right. If right. you know what I mean. Yep. So that's why Woody always stuck up for yeah. him. Yeah. And that's, and that's why, I mean, you know, you, you're friends with somebody, you should be there, you know, you mm -hmm. should be there. Like for. I said, he was doing the work. It was recognized. He was putting in the work with right. his body. He was, you know, maybe not training in the right places, so to say, but he was right gear, work yep. on his body. He impressed the promoter and that is the goal in pro wrestling. Yeah. Um, I do want to tell a big Woody story because I know he meant a lot to you. Sure. Uh, Woody loved me up until me and Jason Rumble, who to this day is one of my best friends. He was in my wedding. We're all good now, but we got into a fight. Yeah. Um, I was not being mature. I was a hot-headed 18-year-old kid. I uh, got to the point where I didn't show up to the school for about seven or eight weeks and I was in the middle of a storyline with APW, so my phone rings one day, number I don't recognize, I answer, it's Woody. And I've never been fired from an independent promotion in my life, but I was fired from APW by Big Woody, and he made sure to express the phrase that I was fired. Yeah. And uh, it was a phone call I'll never forget, because I was like, I just fucking fired from a job that barely pays me. I'm but right. if, I, if I am remembering correctly, and now that you say this, I, I do remember it, he, he he told you until you get right with Rumble. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. he definitely he you know, but he it, we, it, it was he was a unique character. He was, was a great uh, guy. He I was. remember he had his room in the locker room by at the fire hall, <laughs> yep. and he had his chair in the back. Yep. And he'd walk into the fire hall, and he'd go into the back yep. office to see what you were doing for the night, and uh, he'd usually rib me about what I was doing be something awful and then 20 minutes later I'd right. be told what I was actually doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, he was living with Gina and Sean. Mm -hmm. They loved him, man. Yep. They loved him. And Sean just got married a couple months ago, I think. Congratulations, Sean. He all, he's all grown up. And congratulations to Gina also. Yep. Now she has a daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. You know? So good me and people. Rumble are good. Can I go work at APW again, do you think? Uh, yeah, to talk to Michael Hit up St Stiff Mike. Hit up Joe Mokley. Oh, baby. Hit up Joe Mokley. You know, I yeah. did. Isn't he he, isn't he, he in didn't charge? answer me. He's I not in charge. Believe it. No, yeah. He's not in charge. Ridiculous. I was left on red. Guys, what do you think about the, the Judgment Day and our truth It's great. How is it? It's fantastic. I can't believe I, anybody out there, Google how old our truth is. Oh, and I you will not, not, yeah. not believe it. Yeah. What is he? Sixty? No, he's, he's closing in on it. Yeah. I think he's fifty-seven. He's, he's closing two years in younger on than me. It's insane. He's, I'm fifty-nine. Uh, so. Yeah. But I you, mean, I, I was a fan. But you didn't win the tag titles last week. No, no, I never <laughs> won the tag titles. He looks great. Yeah, with too, a lot man. of women in my life, though, I'll say that. Yeah. Nobody asked, but okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did you get a belt? Exactly. Did you get a belt? Did you pull it down nope, from the ladder? No, no, no. I took still, off my belt. I still think he's cooler than you then. <laughs> that was perfect, though. Uh, no, I got to stop coming here. It, I, Nobody asked. I got a soft spot for, for, uh, for tag team wrestling. You guys know that. Yeah. And so to me, that tag match was one of the best matches of the weekend. Yeah. And not only that, it did the super, super important thing of dividing up those goddamn belts again. Yeah. 
and and brought guys up. Honestly, I'm always a big fan of uh, multi men. Yeah, cluster F ladder matches. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good match. And like I said, I mean, I was really happy that uh, you know our truth gets something out of all yeah, the yeah. entertainment he's been giving us. I knew as soon and as they theory spoke. and um, Walla. Yeah, not too shabby together. Yep, really, they work. Yep. Yep. I haven't seen Austin Theory wrestle since probably an ex. A, a well, they got him with show. they got him with Grayson Waller, and I'm serious. Grayson Waller is so kind of obnoxious, but with Theory, it kind of it works. Yeah, no, they're, yeah. they're good together. They're good yeah. separate, but they're good together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's young too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The two Austin of them, Theory the two too. of them got bright futures ahead of them. I think. Definitely, guys. Let's talk about the three guys, local guys that are in NXT. Okay, we got a minute and a half. Carmelo Hayes, Josh Briggs, and Dijak. Mm-hmm. All of them came through APW too. Yeah. And since I'm uh, singing the praises of APW here. Yeah, that's all right. That's good. Yeah. That's a good company. Michael Moore's a great guy. That's where Dijak had his first match. What? Oh, really? I remember seeing a oh, clip of him that. being a bartender. Yeah. The week before. Yeah, yeah, we did a skit. Oh, yes. yeah, I remember. You yeah. guys told that story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Woody gave him his first gimmick, he gave him his first match. And uh, I think it was. That's why. He was still training at Chaotic, and they weren't ready to put, them on, put him on their shows. Nice. So Woody took the opportunity and started using them. He That's fits the cool. build of a pro wrestler. He took it seriously. He knew mm -hmm. the same thing with Josh Briggs. They were former football players. They, yep. I think Briggs often opted out of the draft, from what I remember. Oh, really? To go learn to be a pro wrestler. Josh Briggs was right in. He's a great kid. You've had Carmelo Cam Briggs. Yes, Carmelo. You never had Dijak. Nope, never had Dijak. I had the opportunity to wrestle Carmelo um, when he was doing like a Christian. Uh, Michael Jackson. Casanova, gimmick. Christian Casanova. Yeah, yeah, it was like a Michael Jackson. Yep. Like you could tell the kid was good. That, that's Smella of New England. England. Yep. yep. Yeah, what he was calling himself. Yeah, no, they're all, I, I can't say enough good things about all three of them. Yeah, incredible. Did, great, you, ever get to work did you guys get anything you want to plug? I'm sure I did, but I don't remember anymore. <laughs> you guys get anything you want to plug? <laughs> no, we just want to thank you for having us, Leo. Thank you guys, honestly. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. Sorry you know, as Ryan Drew says, you guys can come on anytime because I'll, have, you know, I have anybody on the show. You're lucky I'm local. They're getting sick of me, Leo. <laughs> guys, we're out. Peace. Hi guys. I hope you're enjoying the show. Listen, I could use a little help to grow my YouTube channel. So if you could please like, share, and subscribe. That's most importantly, subscribe. Send me a direct message. And I'll give you a shout out here on the show. My YouTube channel is real simple. It's just my name, Leo Connors. Thanks in advance. Peace.